The reviews are in, and we're going to tell you what they are. He's Todd Vandenberg. I'm Rob Steele, and since I've got more movies this week, I'm going first. So there. Ooh, ha. I like it. Starting with a, a family movie. So we don't do the do don't do a whole lot of those, but you know what? It it's past time. There is, however, a catch that I'll get to at the end of this. Uh, it's the most bizarre cross of a couple of Disney classics for this one. Uh, I'm talking about the new Disney film Christopher Robin, which I got, finally got to see. I've, I've actually been looking forward to this. Um, but the movies that get crossed weren't what I was expecting. I mean, the first and most obvious one is the original The Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh, which came out in uh, 1977. Or maybe it was the books that Gopher isn't in. I don't, you know, whichever one you want to go with. There's a lot of stuff from the books and the movies that ended up in this, which are cute and they're adorable. That's cute and cool. Um, and a lot of the original movie is, you know, just recreated in live action with minor variations. Like it's Christopher Robin, who is played beautifully by Ewan McGregor, uh, getting stuck in the doorway instead of Pooh from Because He Ate Too Much Honey. <laughs> it's because Christopher Robin grew up. Hello. Um, the other movie it resembles is, kind of oddly, Mary Poppins. Because there's an overlying theme of how people need to get out and play more. The stress of work life isn't everything. Enjoy your family. Enjoy your friends. Enjoy the fields and streams. And, oh, let's all be hippies. <laughs> um, you know, I think that it, it was a really good mix of those two. Uh, it does lead to a supl- surprising political turn at the end, which is something to really look forward to. But I'm gonna, I'm not gonna spoil it. I'm just gonna tell you it's there. Look for it. You'll love it when it comes up. Uh, the best part to me, which I am going to spoil just a little bit, and it's not gonna matter because when you see it, you'll know it's coming. But uh, there's a bit in the book where Christopher Robin's daughter Madeline which might be a tie-in to the Madeline books. I am absolutely unfamiliar with those. Make of that what you wish. (laughs) Anyway, she meets Pooh, Piglet, Eeyore, and Tigger. And she asks what a Tigger is, (laughs) which leads to Tigger inevitably singing the, ooh, the wonderful thing about Tigger's song. That's awesome. But before he gets started, and I, I love this, before he gets started, Eeyore looks at the camera and goes, oh, no, not the song again. And when he's done, she looks at Eeyore and goes, does he do that a lot? Several times a day. I'm like, oh, jeez. And that's it's brilliant. That's it's, beautiful. It's a brilliant movie. It is brilliantly done. Um, I guess one thing to look out for, and this is not a complaint, I uh, just it, it tugs on a lot of heartstrings. It really does. There's there's a lot of oh moments, and your heart kind of goes, ooh, flutter. Oh, not working as well. Um <laughs> It's, you know, I didn't grow up on Winnie the Pooh, but my first two daughters did. Uh So every so often you'd see something that would just make you go, oh, and get a little weepy, but in a good way. Um, It's out now, I think on DVD, it's available on Amazon Prime and YouTube paying service and Google Play. But this is my warning. And the one thing that I found horribly wrong, and it's not with the movie, I looked up the movie to find out where it was available uh, through Google, and it came up, sent me to a website called Decider, which tells you, hey, here's what movies are out, what TV shows are out, where you can find them and stuff. And oh dear, Decider, I would honestly stay away from because I'm looking up Christopher Robin, which is a Disney movie. Mm-hmm. It's a very, very kid friendly movie. Ads, however, Decider decided to put up on this are unedited, non blurred sex ads not for porn sites it has things like trending now and every one of these has a picture <clears throat> like the top 10 sexy sex movies on netflix <laughs> for christopher robin for christopher robin <sighs> 10 disney or nickelodeon stars who grew up and stripped down which includes a topless picture of anne hathaway <laughs> um which which of course <laughs> I, I'm going to go through some of these. Hang on with, a minute. Within the next 10 seconds of hearing this, is like half of the audience will be going, oh, Half of the audience gonna, is going to decide. decide. Um, 10 times actors had real sex on screen. And I love the way that the, the last two of these are, fil- or, are, are phrased. I know who you did last summer, the all-time steamiest horror hookups. Oh, God. <laughs> and this is for Christopher Robin, the Disney movie. 
and Bumping Uglies, the 10 worst sex scenes of all time. <laughs> oh my God, what the heck? I'm, it's, okay. it's wrong on so many levels. I have to. I have to. Christopher Robin is an awesome movie. But if you're going to look up kids' things, don't don't go to Decider. That's really strange and insane. I thought so as well. Hmm. Oh, my God. Skipping that. But watch Christopher Robin because it, it's actually really well done. And it, it's a fun movie. The whole family can watch it, unlike Bumping Uglies, which isn't, I'm guessing. <laughs> wow. Well, at least now I know that I will be watching Christopher Robin in, yeah. instead of going to Decider. Uh yeah. And I'm glad you said that because I've been, it's one of those things, I need to make time so I can watch Christopher Robin. I've not seen it yet. So now an extra reason to watch Christopher Robin because. There is another streaming service to buy. Woohoo. Oh, wait. <laughs> it's probably on one you've already got Woo. for a change. Woohoo. Well done. Uh, <laughs> the movie I'm reviewing is, speaking of streaming services, it's on Netflix. And it is called Outlaw King of, and in pre-pro. Now I'm gonna, or is it? Exactly. The the actual title of the film, when it comes up on your screen, whether you're watching in 4K or on a six-inch uh, black-and-white Panasonic, is Outlaw Slash King, which does make a difference. He's not the Outlaw King. He's an Outlaw and a King, depending on your point of view. That's what the whole movie is about. Um, he is also, however, an Outlaw King. This stars Chris Pine, who you may have seen in a few movies here and there. Uh Star Trek. All et cetera, of them? Et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, he's one of the Chris's. Um, and speaking of all of them, you get to see all of him in one scene. And You mean Chris Pine shows off his tree? He does. Uh, and unfortunately, that seems to be almost half of the t- talk is about Chris Pine's nude scene, which is kind of – not that the nude scene is unfortunate. It's kind of unfortunate that that's what the talk about is as opposed to the talk about the movie. Um First, is he going to be in Bumping Uglies? He, he could I'm be. He, he, he could be. He could be in Bumping Pretties because they're both, ah. they're both pretty. Um, oh, there you go. It is the story of Robert the Bruce who became the king of Scotland uh, because he was tired of paying taxes to the English. So basically, this takes place uh, slightly after Braveheart, put it that way, um, which was about William Wallace. In this, spoiler alert, William Wallace doesn't get it done, in case you haven't seen Braveheart or didn't pay attention during history. Uh, Robert the Bruce basically took up the mantle, and they, they go on from there. So it's about the, the, the Scots War for Independence from England. Um, it's from the director of Hell or High Water, which is a great freaking movie. Uh, David McKenzie's the director. Uh, that's a, a modern Western also starring Chris Pine. Hey, how about that? Uh and actually, if you're going to watch one of the two, watch Hell or High Water just because it's better. But Outlaw King is a really good movie. Uh, weird thing about this film is it was premiered at – yes, it's for Netflix, but to did come out of the theaters briefly. Uh, and I believe it's actually out mm, – yeah, actually just came out this weekend. Uh, but it's, it's just limited screenings, just one of these things. So, hey, it's a real movie, so you can watch it on ours. We have a real movie. Premiered at the Toronto Film Festival. Sorry, the Toronto International Film Festival. So that way you can call it TIFF instead of TIFF. Um, <laughs> did not have a good premiere. Basically, the reaction was, eh, this is really, really long, and I got bored. Not a good thing for a historical drama featuring a lot of no. fights. So there are some stories out there that said, oh, Netflix cut 20 minutes of the movie. Like, nope. The director, David McKenzie, cut 20 minutes of the movie. He Because oh. the story is, is that they literally finished the cut 48 hours before it premiered at the film festival. That doesn't give you a lot of time to review it and think about, yeah, was this the right thing to do? And he takes full responsibility, as he should, because he's the director, of, wow, that really was too long. That really didn't work. So he cut 20 minutes out, made it a tighter film. It's still just under two hours long so it's not like oh my god there's nothing left in the movie um one of the reviews i did read of someone who saw it at the tiff and has seen the new version much better film according to to this critic uh i can't say it's a much better film because i wasn't at tiff but the pacing is good uh if you are interested in his sex scene it takes about an hour and a half in so you can <laughs> you can fast forward sorry i thought to, you were going to say his sex scene took an hour and a half I'm like wow yeah, that's- there's a sex scene in it and it's not that long uh the scene 
just making that clear. But literally, I think it's like one twenty-seven fifty-one is is what you're looking for if you're if you're looking for Chris's pine. Uh, it's a long shot. No, well, okay, pun intended. Whatever you want, but it's not a close-up. Just just put it that way. So go ahead, jump on Netflix and get it over with, and then you can watch that. But then go back to the beginning to watch the movie. Um, is it a great movie? No, I don't think it's a great movie because it's still just it. I won't say it drags, but for whatever reason, it it's not just a pulse pounding, hard driving movie. And I guess I did that subconsciously because of the whole thing with the sex with the uh, nude scene. But anyway, uh, but it is definitely a good movie. It's definitely worth watching. Chris Pine is excellent. His his accent is pretty darn good uh not being around a lot of scots i can't say oh it's great or it's bad but it sounds authentic enough to me uh, really good cast uh nice little side plots that don't detract from the film they tie in very very interesting film really good action scenes uh pine is excellent um surprised i think maybe one of the reasons it's not as tight as it could be because there are five screenwriters that seems kind of weird uh but Outlaw slash King, now streaming on Netflix. It definitely worth seeing, and a very good performance from Mr. Pine. Ta-da! Excellent. See, I was curious about that movie too, and not just for the pine tree. Yeah, it's good. It's not. It, is it great? No, it's not the best historical drama I've, I've seen, but it's certainly better than a lot that I have seen. Uh, the fight scenes are excellent, but it's not. It's certainly not about the fight scenes. I mean, there's some political intrigue because, after all, it is about trying to break away from England, et cetera, et cetera. Good stuff. Very good. Very good stuff. Uh, I will say there is a sex scene probably, I don't know, 30, 45 minutes into the movie. And you think that's the scene because, aha, he's taking his shirt off and he's climbing into the bed. And you almost have the full nude scene, but you don't. So I think that was an, an, an odd little tease from from the director. It's like, nah, this is... A, Actually, I don't because he didn't, didn't do that deliberately because he's kind of like, really, all people are talking about is the fact that he's naked. That kind of bumps me. Uh, but again, Pine is very good in the movie. Uh, the actress, <coughs> excuse me, the actress playing Elizabeth, who becomes his wife, also quite excellent in the role. It's just a really, it's a good movie. It's not great, but it's a good movie. It's definitely worth worth your time. Uh, so that was the thing I was going to say. There's a surprising amount of humor to it um, because I didn't expect any. It's not like it's not Monty Python and the Holy Grail, but there's more humor to it than I expected, which is a good thing because it does relieve the, the tension. So worth watching. Outlaw King. Tension breakers are good. They are good. Um, let's see. For the other thing I did this week, I went back to the birthday thing. Woo! I love birthday things. And again, looking at you know today, Friday, November the what the hell is today? The sixteenth. Today is the sixteenth. You know whose birthday it is today? Yeah, me neither. I didn't recognize any of the names on the list. Nope. So I know it's not mine. Yeah, mine either. I know yours is coming up. Happy birthday, by the way. Hey, thanks. Um, but earlier this week, Johnny Lee Miller had a birthday, and a lot of people cool. aren't entirely sure of who he is. Some people might go, "Ooh, the guy from Train Spotting." I know not people, not many people look. Oh, the guy from Mind Hunters, which was also a good movie. That's not what I'm reviewing. The guy from Professional Golf. Oh, that's just Johnny Miller. The it, see different people all together. <laughs> I actually Indeed. went with his TV show that has become quite popular and is very good. Although a lot of people you love that show. Him. I do. I'm binge watching it again because for good for good reason fun. because it's a good show. Elementary, the somewhat Americanized version of and modernized version of Sherlock Holmes. Uh, with some some plot twists, uh, there are differences between the original Holmes and this one. For example, it's set now instead of a hundred years ago, similar to Sherlock. But it's there's enough differences between this and Sherlock to make them both worth 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 watching. Easy for you to say. Uh, for example, the one of the uh, big changes is there's not a John Watson. Uh, Lucy Liu plays Joan Watson. You know what? I'm not sure that really makes that much of a, a, a difference. Uh, a lot of people had an issue with that. A woman playing Watson can't have that. Y- why not? It, it's it's not like they're having sex or something every episode. Or ever, really. Which is kind of odd if you look at the way the characters are done. But um, Lestrade, who is usually the police officer that works with him, uh, with Holmes, in a couple of episodes, but usually he's working with 
Captain Thomas Gregson, played by Aidan Quinn, who does a great job in the series, and Detective Marcus Bell, played by John Michael Hill, also does not they both do an excellent job of playing the characters. Um, they, they make you interested in the characters, which is what we need. Good characters, and you've got them in this, even though those Holmes, Watson, Gregson, and Bell are your main characters. Everyone else is usually either a suspect or dead. I'm just saying. <laughs> There, there are, there's not a whole lot of recurring characters in this. Uh, Mycroft is in it for a little while. Um, and I think he is the biggest issue that, that my entire family has with it, this series is that Mycroft, for some reason, isn't the clean, well-polished brother he's been in every other incarnation. Uh, in this version, he's a restaurateur. Fine. That's really an undercover thing. He works for MI6. Shh, that's a spoiler. <laughs> Whatever. It's in season two, and it doesn't last that long, thankfully. Um, he looks like a homeless dude. <laughs> a, is, it, is that just me? He look, he, To me, he looks like a well-dressed homeless guy, which is kind of a weird way to phrase it. But when you see him, you'll go, yeah, yeah, that's a well-dressed homeless dude. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, regardless, it's just finished up season six. There is going to be a season seven, and it's going to be set in England. Although, allegedly, it is still going to have Aidan Quinn and John Michael Hill in it. Not sure how that's going to work, because they're not mm. coming with him. Um, they're they're going to FaceTime. Th- uh, that could be a thing. I don't really know how it's going to work. They haven't started filming yet. But it, it's it got six seasons available for streaming now. I think it's, a, what, 142 episodes. And I don't know that there's a bad episode. I mean, yes, there are some that are certainly better than others. But there's not a bad episode. There's not a, you know, every so often in a TV series, you go, oh, they made that episode. And that's usually the episode where people tune in for the first time and go, this episode was crap and never watch again. <laughs> but there, there's not one in this series, even though they've given it the crappiest time slot on CBS, which is the Sunday after the football games thing, because they don't know how to time out football games, football games, the games that are on a clock. <laughs> you know when they should end, although you kind of factor in timeouts and commercial breaks. So you go take like, here's when it should regulation time should end. Let's add 15 minutes in case of an overtime and another 15 minutes for timeouts and other crap. That way, the shows that are supposed to start at 8 can start at 8 instead of 8.43 like they do. Because CBS, can't, that's my one thing against CBS is you can't can tell time apparently <laughs> so your dvr will get like 45 minutes of the good wife i don't know if she is or not followed by 15 minutes of the show you actually want so i'm going to send cbs a clock with <laughs> instructions on how to read it so we can you know because elementary is too good a show to be put in that time slot that's all you, i'm saying you are you are correct sir it's it's streaming now in a variety of places uh, I think Hulu and Netflix both have it. Uh, they're out on DVD. Go wa- watch this. It's a very good series. Did you have anything else to add to this show? Because I think it, I've run it, out. It is, it is a very good show. I agree. Uh, happy birthday, Johnny Lee Miller, belatedly. Uh, as far as the whole the thing with the, the, the football timing, it's like, yeah, it depends on if they run the ball or pass the ball more. It's going to make the game longer, et cetera, et cetera. But you're absolutely right. To build in an amount of time to cover almost any possibility because it's not like college. You're not going to run into like six overtimes and just fill the time with your post game chatter because they do anyway. You do like 17 days of pre-show save right. half an hour of it for the end and just say, okay, like you said, whether it's eight or eight thirty, whatever the timing works out to make sure the shows start at the correct time instead of screwing everything up. Just and just do that because most people People who are watching the football game, they're not going to complain that, oh, my God, I got to watch 17 minutes or 23 minutes or however long it is of post-game discussion because you've got the talking heads and they're all going to be sitting there talking about all the games that happened that day. The audience is not going to, like, disappear. Bad nauseum. And so, like, yeah, that seems like to be a really easy fix, and I'm not sure why they don't do that. I agree. And elementary is a lovely, very good watchable, bingeable show. It's one of the few shows I can binge. You know, I usually fall asleep because I'm old or something. Well, anyway. and that's that's a lot of hours to watch. It is. 142 episodes, but they're worth it. 
and fun. So if you don't watch Elementary, go watch Outlaw King. Go watch Christopher Robin. And if you want to watch Bumping Uglies, that is entirely up to you. But whatever you do this week, go see a movie. That's pretty much it.